نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم اني اسالك علما نافعا رزقا طيبا وعملا متكبلا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته verse number 42 and we have already sent messengers to nations before you then we seized them with poverty and hardships why that perhaps they might humble themselves to us in this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining that he puts into trial people and nations with what will with bil ba'sa'i with difficulties with crises with poverty and with what of the ra'i with all forms of hardships calamities and crises and the purpose allah says is what la allahum yatazarraun so that they do what yatazarraun what do we mean by yatazarraun the root word is zawd ra ain it means what to cry to weep and it means to humble to to leave all forms of arrogant behaviors so the worst highlights that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his azab his torment in any form how does he want the people to respond and how does he want the nations to react towards the torment or the punishments of allah that when when the people they turn disobedient when the people they turn disobedient and they fail to believe in allah or they fail to believe in the prophets or they fail to remember the hereafter or they fail to obey the commandments and the teachings and the do's and don'ts of allah and the prophets and they turn disobedient and they tend to stay stubbornly arrogantly they stay they want to stick on to this condition of disobedience and transgression and they start transgressing from the limits of allah then as a warning then as a warning for these disobedient transgressors to give them a jolting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them into trial so the first thing we learn is that the trials the hardships the crises and the calamities come why because of the wrong doings the disobediences and the transgressions of the people and the nations themselves and the second thing we learn from these verses is that when allah puts a nation to crisis what does he want or what does he expect them to do is that the disobedient transgressors what they were indulging in the disobedience and the transgressions they were indulging in with full arrogance they should give it up they should give it up and they should get humbled and they should surrender they should surrender to the obedience of allah and they should submit humbly to the obedience of allah and at the same time they should realize confess accept and regret regarding all their wrong doings and sins and they should seek forgiveness and they should return allah they should return towards allah repenting and seeking forgiveness and they should cry and they should weep and beg for allah's forgiveness for all forms of malice corruption they had created because of their transgression and disobedience so this is the lesson we learned from this verses is that we realize that today all the muslim states and the communities and the countries they are exposed to various forms of calamities and various crises and calamities they are befalling in all the islamic countries and all the islamic communities 
So the reason is why we all need to realize as followers of Prophet Sallallahu we need to realize that it is because of our own behavior. It is because of our own manners of disobedience and arrogantly refusing to obey the teachings and the commandments of Allah. And until and unless we we reform ourselves and we let go of all this obe disobedience and arrogance till then the conditions will not be reversed. So the solution to all the situations of crises, if we want to turn them back, if we want to turn back the calamities and we want to, we want to get away from, we want to escape these hardships and trials will be only, only possible by seeking forgiveness by humble, by humbly bowing down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving all forms of stubborn, arrogant, disobedient, transgressing behaviors and surrender to Allah, surrender to the obedience of Allah and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is what we learn from this verse. And in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that when the people in this crisis, they do not adopt and they do not show the desired behavior, that what happens is, Allah says that, why? Why, when our punishments came to them, did they not humble themselves, but their hearts became hardened and shaitan made attractive to them that which they were doing? So when they forgot, forgot that by which they had been reminded, we opened to them the doors of every good thing. We opened to them the doors of every good thing until when they rejoiced in that which they were given, we seized them suddenly and they were then in despair. So before terminating or before perishing the disobedient transgressing nations by the great torment before that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends small trials small uh, small crises as a warning sign as a jolting sign for the people so that they return towards allah submitting surrendering seeking forgive uh, seeking forgiveness and repenting and reforming themselves so the people that committed wrong were eliminated and praise to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Say, have you considered if Allah should take away your hearing and your sight and set a seal upon your hearts, which deity other than Allah could bring them back to you? Look, look how we diversify the verses, then they still turn away. Allahumma la taj'alla minhum rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana zanubana wa qina azab an-nar. Say, have you considered if the punishment of Allah should come to you unexpectedly or manifestly, will any be destroyed but the wrongdoing people? And we sent not the messengers except as bringers of good tidings and warners. So whoever believes and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. But those who deny our verses, the punishment will touch them for their defiant disobedience. Say, I do not tell you that I have the depositories containing the provisions of Allah or that I know the unseen, nor do I tell you that I am an angel. I only follow what is revealed to me. Say, is the blind equivalent to the seeing? Then will you not give thought? And warn by the Quran, and warn by the Quran those who fear that they will be gathered before their Lord. For them besides him will be no protector and no intercessor that they might become righteous. And do not send away those who call upon their Lord morning and afternoon, seeking his countenance. Not upon you is anything of their account and not upon them is anything of your account. So were you to send them away, you would then be of the wrongdoers. And thus we have tried some of them through others that the disbelievers might say, is it these whom Allah has favored among us? Is not Allah most knowing of those who are grateful? And when those come to you who believe in our verses, say, 
peace be upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering that when Muslims meet Muslims, they say what? Salamun alaikum. Our Lord has decreed upon himself mercy. He has decreed upon himself mercy that any of you who does wrong out of ignorance and then repents after that and corrects himself, indeed he is forgiving and merciful. Allahumma ja'alli min al-tawwabina wa ja'alli min al-mutatakhirin. Allahumma inna ka afuvan karimun tohibu afa fafu anna fafu anna fafu anna astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. And thus do we detail the verses, and thus the way of criminals will become evident. Say, indeed, I have been forbidden to worship those you invoke besides Allah. Say, I will not follow your desires, for I would then have gone astray, and I would not be of the rightly guided. So to be of the rightly guided, we need what? We need to stick to the faith on oneness of Allah, to believe in the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to believe in hereafter, fear hereafter, and to make preparations of hereafter. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Say, indeed, I am on a clear evidence from my Lord, and you have denied it. I do not have that for which you are impatient. The decision is only for Allah. He relates the truth. He is the best of deciders. Say, if I had that, if I had that for which you are impatient, the matter would have been decided between me and you. But Allah is the most knowing of the wrongdoers. Verse 59, and with him are the keys of the unseen. None knows them except him. And he knows what is on the land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but he knows it. And no grain is there within the darkness of the earth and no moist or dry thing, but that is written in a clear record. The verse Allah says that with him are the keys of unseen. Mefatihul ghaib is the keys of the unseen. And what are the keys of unseen? We do learn from the verses of the Quran and from traditions that the keys of the, of the unseen are five. That is the matters of the rain, the issues of the sustenance, what grows and decreases in the uterus of the mother and the matters of death and how and what which will happen tomorrow so all the matters of tomorrow of death of the of the things growing in the uterus the issues of the rain and the sustenance is the matter of unseen and these are only and only known by allah who is alimul ghaib alamul ghayub this is the power, the authority, the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And trying to find about the future or unseen is what is another form of polytheism. And this is a, poly, is a major polytheism with the rights and attributes of Allah. And anybody indulging in this form of polytheism that is trying to find about, about the future by any means, may it be by the sun signs, the hor horoscopes, the movements of the stars, the lines of the hands, the power mystery, the knowledge of astrology, or whatever it is. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has reported, it's been reported in a tradition that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever goes to a sorcerer and to a future teller and he agrees and he obeys to what the information the person gives, then he has done what? He has disbelieved in the messages of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a person who tries to find out about the future and about the keys of unseen is who in uh, reported by this tradition is a disbeliever. Similarly, it has been informed to all of us that a person who indulges in any of such activities of future telling, of finding about future, 40 days, salah for 40 days of such a person will not be accepted. 
And it is he who takes your souls by night and knows what you have committed by the day. Then he revives you therein that a specified term may be fulfilled. Then to him will you will be your return. Then he will inform you about what you used to do. Allahumma hasibna hisab yasira. And he is the subjugator over his servants. And he sends you, he sends over you guardian angels. Until when death comes to one of you, our messengers take him and they do not fail in their duties. Then they, his servants, are returned to Allah, their true Lord. Unquestionably, his is the judgment and he is the swiftest of accountants. Allahumma hasibna hisabi yasira. Say, who rescues you from the darkness of the land and the sea when you call upon him, imploring aloud and privately, if he should save us from this crisis, we will surely be among the thankful. Say, it is Allah who saves you from it and from every distress. Then you still associate others with him. Say, he is the one able to send upon you afflictions from above you or from beneath your feet or to confuse you so you become sex and make you taste the violence of one another. Look how we diversify the signs that they might understand. Now, in the previous verses, 43 to 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the purpose of causing affliction. There we learned that Allah explained why does he put nations and people into trial and that when he afflicts people and nations with trials, hardships and crises, how does he expect them to behave and respond? Let's revise. Allah says, why does he do that? That is, they surrender, they submit, they cry, and they seek forgiveness, and they let go of their obstinacy, stubbornness, and arrogance, and they become obedient servants of Allah. So now, here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining how will the afflictions, how will the hardships and crises which Allah has ordered, how will they come to the people? How will afflictions might befall on people? Is Allah explains here, from above you. So how do afflictions and crises come from above the bondsman? Like in form of many natural disasters or calamities, striking in form of rainstorms, thunderstorms, hailstorms, snowstorms, tornadoes, lightning, heavy downpour of rain ending up in clouds, or it may be from the society, the upper class of the society, the rulers, the leaders, they turning into arrogant, disobedient, transgressors, implementing the laws of disobedience, implementing the systems of transgressions in the society. So this upper class of the society itself can become what? It can become a trial for the people of the society. And moreover, the upper class, the affluent class, the wealthy class of the society, setting up all the standards and setting up all the examples of exhibition and music and dancing and going about and all these activities, setting up these examples of all these prohibited and disliked activities. So this affluent society, this affluent uh, people of the society itself can become what? They can become a crisis and trial for the society. And then the next portal, Allah explains, is from beneath your feet. So from beneath the feet can be the natural disasters striking the people like earthquakes. Earthquakes with volcanic eruptions and the lava flowing and burning all the communities and the localities and the colonies. And then hot water springs gushing out and burning things which come in their root. Or they may be engulfing, the earth engulfing, or the cutting of the land as crevices and craters. Or there may be, or there may be in the society, the lower class of the society, the have-nots of the society. They're going about looting and plundering and snatching and killing in their frustration. The delinquents of the poor class, they can be a social crisis and they can turn out as a social dilemma. Or they can be what? They can be the following generation. 
the generation of the youth of the society. The youth of the society indulging in music and dancing, drugs, addiction, aversion from religion. This can all be a source of crisis in the society itself. And then the third medium, which Ola explains, is from within you. From within you, from among you, dividing into sects and making you taste the violence of one another. So within you, it means what? That dividing, dividing the people, dividing the communities and nations into lobbies, into sects, all having mutual, mutually having hard and harsh feelings against each other and enmities against each other and hostilities against each other, being enemies, being daggers drawn with each other cutting each other's throats, shedding each other's blood. So this is like one of the worst social crises. Now, if I stop here, and if we analyze the state of affairs of the Ummah, we will analyze that we being Muslim Ummah at all the levels, at the level of the Ummah, at the level of the Muslim states, at the level of the Muslim societies, at the level of our Muslim families, we are growing through all forms of these trials and crises. All such crises from among us, from above us, from below our feet, they are being struck at all levels. So we need to do what? We need to remember reciting Kanut and Asla as well. Allahumma ghfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat Allahumma alif bayna qulubihim wa aslih zata baynihim wa ansurhum ala aduvika wa aduvihim Allahumma la'anil qafarat al-lazina yusudduna an sabilik wa yuqadzibuna rusulik wa yuqatiluna awliyaak Allahumma khalif bayna kalimatihim wa zalzil aqdamahum wa anzil bihim baqsaq al-lazi la turadduhu anil qawmil mujrimin Verse 66, Allah says, But your people have denied it while it is the truth. Say, I am not over you a manager, for every happening is a finality, and you are going to know. So the verses of Surah Al-Anam continuously inviting towards the belief in our faith in the oneness of Allah, belief in the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, belief in the messages or teachings of the verses of Quran, and belief in hereafter. But Allah says that despite they're being invited for all these forms of belief and faith, but still, despite the fact that it is a truth, the people have, re uh, they have refused. For every happening is a finality, and you are going to know that what will be the punishment, the penalty of all those who fail to believe. Verse 68. <laughs> And when you see those who engage in offensive discourse concerning our verses, then turn away from them. Then turn away from them. Till when? until they enter into another conversation. And if shaitan should cause you to forget, then do not remain after the reminder with the wrongdoing people. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding all of us and all the reciters of Quran regarding certain form of gatherings of the wrongdoing people, which when where and how should they be avoided and why should they be avoided? And we have already talked about it in Surah An-Nisa, but I will be repeating what these, this verse again highlights the same message is that Allah is ordering all those who believe not to stay 
or not to be present in a certain type of a gathering which has been arranged by the wrongdoing people or by the disbelievers. The believer's presence in a specific gathering is being condemned. Gatherings where, where the people, they are indulging in the denial, in the ridiculing of the verses of the Quran. And it has been suggested that till the people, they are indulging in the denial and in the ridiculing of the verses of Quran, until and unless they change their topic of conversation, you do not have to stay on there. Now, denying and ridiculing of the verses can be in two forms. It can be verbal, like by the word of mouth, or it can be by the behavior or the manner of someone. So denying the verses of Quran and mocking and making fun of the verses of Quran by word of mouth is like when there is a gathering of people and they are openly refusing or rejecting the commandments of Allah, or they are criticizing the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. Like you might have come across people talking about like that they're saying that nowhere ever is there written or there's mentioned in Quran that Muslim women, they need to cover their head. There, there is nowhere ever in Quran is there written that veil is obligatory for Muslim women. And then mentioning things like wine is not forbidden in Islam and the banking system, the current banking system of interest, it is not forbidden in Quran. It is not proven by Quran and Hadith. Are then again making fun of, making fun of the Muslims and the believers, like mocking modest Muslim women wearing a veil and calling them like linja turtles and whatnot, or ridiculing men with the beard, or men Muslim men believers offering five times a prayer, five times a day, offering salah in the mosque, calling them fanatics and telling them that they were crazy people and they just don't do anything other than just going to the mosque and labeling them that they have got a mosque mania and so on and so forth. So we do come across people uh, can, making conversations like this. So Allah is telling all of us and ordering all of us that we do not have to stick around such a gathering where this form of conversation is in progress. The reason is that firstly, it might, if a believer is present at such an occasion, it will lead to the person, the believer might get irritated and might get irritated and agitated. And this might cause, it might trigger a debate and might end up in a fight or in a quarrel. So, and to avoid this. And secondly, the conversation of such, the silly conversation of such people might influence, might influence a person with a weak faith and with a weak belief. And this might cause the person to stagger and change his faith and influence his faith and belief also. Now, the second type of uh, thing which I mentioned is gatherings in which by people are making fun of the verses of Quran by their actual behavior, by their actual mannerism. That is, means what? That is by the activities and by their manners, they show as if they are they are just not bothered. They're just not bothered about what the do's and don'ts of Allah are. And they are just not bothered about what is lawful, what is unlawful, what is sin, and what is forbidden by Allah. Like gatherings and get-togethers where, where there's dancing, where there's dancing, music, mixed gatherings, drinking, gambling, wasteful wasteful spending being showed off exhibition demonstration of wealth going on may it be a, a a marriage event may it be a concert maybe a musical program whatever it is all such all such get togethers where all these activities are being carried out openly without any hesitation without any regret or without any fear of Allah whatsoever they actually imply what? That all those who are involved or they are participating in such activities which are disliked, which are forbidden, which are unlawful, they are all these people indulging or they involving or they are participating in all these activities. They are actually by their behavior openly, they are reflecting and they are showing and they are proving that they are making fun of the commandments of Quran, Hadith, and Sunnah. So that is why believers are being instructed to stay away from such get-togethers. 
and to move away or to walk out of such gatherings. Why? Why is this instruction being given to all of us and all the believers? Number first is, the first reason is that it is very obvious. It is very, very obvious that such an environment and such a company, it may turn out to be very catchy. It may be very attractive. It may be very powerfully or mysteriously, it may be fascinating, seductive, alluring. And if a person has a weak faith and belief, it might be the person might get attracted to all these alluring temptations the gathering carries and offers. And we know that faith and belief is, with no doubt, it is our most valuable treasures, which we, which that person may just, just lose in this gathering, in this environment. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been reported, it has been reported in a tradition that one who copies or simulates any other nation, he is like one of them. So in such a place, if the person happens to, if all these activities, they happen to appeal the mind, they happen, the person happens to like it or approve of it, or even enjoy the whole activity to even a minutest of degree, then the faith will be destroyed. The, the belief will definitely wake, weaken and it will be shaken. So these activities will influence, they will influence the behavior, the likes, the dislikes, the preferences and the priorities. These might alter under the tempting influences also. And moreover, the presence of a believer, the presence of believer will put a stamp, will put a stamp and give a go ahead signal for all these activities. Because, you know, a person who is God fearing and a person who has the knowledge, who has the knowledge of Quran and Hadith and people recognize him as a knowledgeable person, a person as a believer, a person as a pious person, a person having a knowledge of Quran and Hadith, people realize them, realize that he is that sort of a person. But that person with this recognition around him, if he happens to be present in such a gathering, it means what? That he is okay with it. He is okay with it and he is fine with it. And then this puts a definite stamp that all these activities might be permissible in Islam. And they might not be disliked in the sights of Allah. Had it been so, this person who is so pious, who is so knowledgeable, who is so righteous, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have been here. So his being here and his being okay with it means that it is permissible and allowed in Islam, and they're not forbidden in Quran. So the presence will just put a seal or stamp of ex ex acceptability. And moreover, last but not the least the walking out of a person from such a gathering or being absent from such a gathering, this will have a positive message also. For example, if in a marriage function, a near and dear relative like a sister is not present. If a sister is not present on such a wedding, then there will be what? The people, the minds of the people will be forced to think. People will ask the reason why the sister is not there. So this will be what? This will be a silent message. A silent message will be definitely conveyed that these things, they are forbidden and they are not permissible in Islam. So that is why we are all being guided. I, I go through the verse again that Allah says that when you see that those who engage in offensive discourse concerning our verses, then turn away from them then turn away from them until they enter into another conversation. And if shaitan should cause you to forget, then do not remain after the reminder with the wrongdoing people. Because why? And those who fear Allah are not held accountable for the disbelievers at all, but only for a reminder that perhaps they will fear him. And leave those, leave those who take their religion as amusement and as a diversion and whom the worldly life has deluded, but remind them with Quran. But remind them with Quran, lest a soul should 
lest a soul be given up to destruction for what it earned. It will have, it will have other than Allah no protector and no intercessor. And if it should offer every compensation, it would not be taken from it. So while they are participating and indulging in these activities, the Muslims and believers, they will stay away, but they will afterwards, they will remind them with Quran to save them with the from the destruction, from the destruction of the penalty and the destruction of their deeds on the day of judgment. And the day of judgment will they will not find any protector or intercessor from Allah. And if it should offer every compensation, it will not be taken from it. Those are the ones who are given to destruction for what they have earned. For them will be a drink of scalding water and a painful punishment because they used to disbelieve. Say, shall we invoke instead of Allah that which neither benefits us or nor harms us and be turned back on our heels after Allah has guided us? We would then be like one whom the devils enticed to wander upon the earth confused while he has companions inviting him to guidance, calling out, come to us, say, indeed, the guidance of Allah is the only guidance, and we have been commanded to submit to the Lord of the words. So continuously in the verses of Surah Al-An'am is a continuous invitation towards the belief in and faith in oneness of Allah to surrender to him, to submit to him humbly in a state of obedience and stick on to it with patience and to establish prayer and fear him. And it is he to whom you will be gathered. Remember the first question on the day of judgment regarding the rights of Allah will be regarding what? Offering of salah. And it is he, it is he who created the heavens and the earth in truth. And the day he says, be it is. He, his word is the truth and his is the dominion on the day the horn is blown. He is the the knower of the unseen and the witness, and he is the wise and acquainted. Rabbi zidni ilma, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafian, rizqan tuayyiban, wa amalam mutakabbala. A'uzu billahi an akuna min al-jahileen. And mention when Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his father, Azar, do you take idols as deities? Indeed, I see you and your people to be in a manifest error. So now verses of Surah An'am, Allah is talking about and is negating all forms of polytheism, inviting towards monotheism. So this discussion would be incomplete without the mention about Khalilullah about whom Allah says in Quran, he was what? Musliman, Hanifan, wa makana min al mushrikeen. He was a focused Muslim, a focused servant of Allah who had submitted and surrendered to Allah. And he was the one, wa ma'ana min al mushrikeen. He was none, he was not out of those who were, who were polytheists, focused Muslim and was not among the polytheists. From verse number 74 to 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, that how he, with the grace of Allah, he discovered the concept and belief of monotheism, and then he stayed steadfast. And how he sacrificed for his, for his sticking on to monotheism and tawheed, and then how was he rewarded. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, his period has been explained as like 2100 years BC. He was, uh, he was born in Iraq in the city of Ur, and his basic trial was an environment in which he had opened his eyes. His birthplace, his homeland was all, the people were all, they were indulging in worshipping idols, and they believed in all forms of polytheistic beliefs. The society was a society of idol worshippers, having hundreds and hundreds of various idols, like the sun god, the moon god, the star gods, and so on. But even a greater trial, even a greater trial was his own family. They were not only idol worshippers, they used to make idols themselves. His father, Azur, his grandfather, they were all 
experts in making idols. Azar did what? He made an idol of gold. He made a golden idol ladle with all forms of expensive jewels, and he presented it to the king Namrud who was the ruler of the state. And Namrud was truly impressed by the expert craftsman, how his craftsmanship, he was really impressed by it. And he ordered, he ordered Azar to make a, a giant statue of Namrud himself so that he could order the people to start worshiping his idol and his statue. Now, when Azar finally made that giant statue of Namrud, he, he rewarded him. So Namrud rewarded Azar, and he was appointed in the court as well. So now what happened was that idols, which were previously just a source of income for them, it, they were just a source of livelihood for the family of Hazrat Ibrahim al Islam. Now they also became a source of power, position, authority, and status in the society and respect in the society also. So for them, for the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam, this idol was what? Idols were like, they meant everything to them. They meant everything to them in their life. The idols were like their lifeline. Idols for the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam were their faith and belief, their love and conviction, their profession, business and trade. They were their source of income, earning and livelihood, and they were a source of respect and regard. And they were, idols were also a source of position, power, authority, and post in the court and in the society. So now in this environment, in this environment, Hazrat Ibrahim salam, he looked around and he looked at the creations of the creator and in the creations, he found the creator himself. And this is now in the following verses is the story of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam that how looking at the creations of the creator, he found and he, he got all the knowledge of the powers, of the authorities, of the control, of the sovereignty, of the attribute of the creator himself. And thus, we did show Ibrahim the realm of heavens and the earth, and that he would be among the certain in faith. So when the night covered him with darkness, he saw a star. He said, that is my Lord. But when it said, he said, I like not those that disappear. So when he looked at the star, why did he say that it was, the, uh, it was his Lord? Because, you know, the people of his locality, they were worshipping stars. And they had made and fabricated and created the idols for the stars they were worshipping. So they were, they were the worshippers of stars. And you know what? In every period, in all the times, stars directly or indirectly, they have been worshipped and they have been idolized and glamorized. Like even today, the top stars, the top stars of the music world, the top stars of the film and the drama world, the top stars of sports. And what do they continue? No, all these top stars of the showbiz world and of the sports world, they do what? They disappear. They disappear. And that is what Hazrat Ibrahim salam, said, that I, li I like not those that disappear. So he disregarded stars as taking stars as Lord because they were not, they were not persistent and they were not permanent. Verse number 77. And when he saw the moon rising, he said, this is my Lord. But when it said, he said, Unless my Lord guides me, I will surely be among the people gone astray. So he said that the moon was their star because they had a huge Nanar idol. He, they used to worship. They used to worship the moon god. And when he looked up at the moon, he thought that it might be the Lord which the people were worshipping. But when the moon also set and the moon disappeared, then he realized that obviously this could not be the God because the God needed to be permanent and needed to stay to be Allah itself. And you know what? Despite of the fact that currently moon itself is not being worshipped, but moon is a symbol of beauty. Moon signifies and symbolizes beauty. And beauty, no doubt, has been worshipped in all ages, in all periods, in all times. But beauty also tends to be temporary. It is never permanent. 
verse number 78. And when he saw the sun rising, he said, this is my Lord. This is greater because the people, they had an idol of Shamas and they used to worship the sun. But when it set, he said, oh, my people, indeed, I am free from what you associate with Allah. So there was a sun god whom they used to worship. He thought that this might be, uh, since it is greater than the star and it is greater than the moon, it might be the Lord. But when the sun also set and disappeared, he realized that obviously it could not be Allah. It could not be the God. And, you know, sun, sun symbolizes, it is a symbol of power. And we do know that power and the powerful, they have always been looked upon. They are always been looked upon. They are copied, they are idolized, they are glamorized, and they are obeyed. Power is obeyed and powerful. While they are in power, they are obeyed, taking them as deities. But we know that all this power and all these powerful, they do not stay forever. Power is temporary and powerful people also stay in power temporarily. So observing all the creations, Hazrat Ibrahim salam, realized that they were all temporary. So how could they be the Allah? So for Allah, the greatest attribute of Allah is what? The isme azam, the greatest attribute of Allah is what? al hayyul qayyum So he realized the falsehood of all forms of this polytheistic idol worshipping which his people were up to. And he recognized and he attained the belief of the creator by observing the creations of the creator. And then once he started believing in the oneness of Allah, he very boldly and he very courageously declared and announced his belief. He said, indeed, I have turned my face towards he who has created the heaven and the earth, inclining towards the truth. And I am not of those who associate others with Allah. And his people argued with him. He said, do you argue with me concerning Allah? while he has guided me, and I fear not what you associate with him and will not be harmed unless my Lord should will something. My Lord encompasses all things in knowledge. They will, they will, uh, then will you not remember? So he announced his faith and invited them all towards faith also. And then he said, and how should I fear what you associate while you do not fear that you have associated with Allah that for which he has not sent down to you any authority. So which of the two parties has more right to security if you should know? Then they who believe and do not mix their belief with injustice, those will have security and they are the rightly guided. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Verse 83, and that was our conclusive argument. And that was our conclusive argument, which we gave Ibrahim salam, against his people. We raised by degrees whom we will. Indeed, your Lord is wise and knowing. So in this verse 83, Allah says that Hazrat Ibrahim salam, he received the conclusive argument regarding monotheism, regarding the belief in oneness of Allah, and regarding the this uh, the uh, regarding the negation and refuting of all forms of polytheism, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a conclusive argument. And by blessing and by the will of Allah, he guided him towards the belief on faith and oneness of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all also, guide us all to connect to the true faith and the true belief. Help us all, help us all recognize and then stay away from all forms of polytheistic beliefs. Guide us and protect us from the evils of polytheism. May they be the customs of the society, may they be the rituals of the community. Bless us all. Bless us all with steadfastness in the belief of oneness of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the recognition 
give us and bless us with the recognition and the comprehension of your attributes, of your power, of your authority, of your mercy, and of your kindness. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-khuda wa tuqa wal athafa wal ghina Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa amal allazi yuballighuni hubbaka Now after reaching the conclusion of true faith of monotheism Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam did what he sacrificed He sacrificed his home, his family, job, his wealth, his trade, his position, power, authority. Like he sacrificed everything which he had in his life. He could have he could have very well like the people of today. He could have come up saying that I will worship Allah and I will offer salah for Allah and I will glorify Allah and I will exalt Allah in my life. But the rest of the things the rest of the things is what it is my business it is a source of income for me it is a source of livelihood for me i can carry on making i can carry on making idols because i am worshiping allah i believe in allah i offer salah to allah i glorify and exalt allah but i can carry on this business of making idols and selling them because this is a business and business and trade and everything is like separate from religion this does not have anything to do with religion but no he did what he had to as a procedure as a messenger and prophet of allah lead an example of excellence for all the followers he did what he sacrificed all he said he said no to all and then he also very courageously he broke all the idols into pieces and he stood up courageously and then he was thrown in the fire and then he sacrificed what being thrown into the fire he sacrificed even his body his flesh his skin and bones and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him saved him protected him ordering the fire ya naruquni baradan wa salaman finally he migrated to palestine and leaving alone even his homeland leaving his homeland his birthplace so he sacrificed of everything from the top to bottom all the blessings of allah he sacrificed for the sake of love of allah for the worship of allah for the steadfastness in the belief of oneness of allah and to save himself and his offspring from the polytheistic beliefs he sacrificed everything he had this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah baqara wa izibtila ibrahim bi kalimatin fa atamma hunna so when he when he so clearly stuck up against all forms of polytheism and when he so patiently endured all forms of trials and hardships and crises and so patiently sacrificed all things for the sake of staying staying steadfast on monotheism what rewards did he receive when he listened with open ears when he when he saw and he observed with open eyes and we when he comprehended the faith with open heart and he sacrificed everything and he stayed patience and obedience in all the trials and hardships what what rewards did he get for sticking up and staying up for monotheism and refuting polytheism what rewards did he get allah recites all the words he was blessed with in the next few verses we gave him we gave ibrahim alayhi salam ishaq and yaqub and all of them were guided and no we guided before and among his descendants daud and suleiman alayhi salam and yusuf and musa alayhi salam and harun alayhi salam thus do we reward the doers of good and zakaria alayhi salam and yahya alayhi salam and isa and elias alayhi salam all were of the righteous they all were the followers the offsprings the progeny of hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam and they were believers of monotheism and they were the negators of polytheism and ismail and elisha and jonah and lut and all of them we preferred over the worlds and some among them 
some among their fathers and their descendants and their brothers. We chose them and we guided them to a straight path. This is the guidance of Allah by which he guides whomever he wills of his servants. But if they had associated others with Allah, then worthless for them would have been whatever they were doing. So what rewards did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, give Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam? He was blessed with sons, with grandsons, with great grandsons, and all of them were guided. The progenies of guided, the progenies of guided people. And then in his offsprings, he was blessed with prophets and a series of prophethood in his family tree. All the generation of righteous, pious people and all the family tree given, given preferences in the worldly matters also. All chosen, the descendants guided, guided by Allah. Now, just tell me, what else can we want? What else as a reward can we want? Or what else can we desire? Or what else can we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, keeping all these rewards in mind, we need to realize how very, very important the concept of belief in oneness of Allah is and how important it is to realize and to comprehend and believe in his attributes. And then in verse number 89 and verse number 88, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, wants that even if these, these blessed people, this blessed family and their descendants, if even they had committed polytheism, then all their worldly, all their worldly deeds would have been wasted. This is the importance we learn to stay away from shirk. In the shirk ala zulmun azim. This is the greatest sin is indulging in polytheism. Allah says in verse 89, I repeat again, Allah says that, but if they had associated, they refers to what? The whole family, the whole progeny, the generations following Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, who were being rewarded by a series of prophethood, who were being rewarded by guidance. Allah says that even if they had associated others with Allah, then worthless for them would have been whatever they were doing. So this is shirk. This is polytheism, which leads to wasting, which leads to derailment, debasing of all the worldly good deeds. They go waste. Those are the ones to whom we gave the scripture in authority and prophethood. But if, they disbel if the disbelievers deny it, then we have entrusted it to a people who are not their in disbelievers. Those are the ones whom Allah has guided. So from their guidance, take an example. Say, I ask of you for this message, no payment. It is not but a reminder for the worlds. And they did not appraise Allah with the true appraisal when they said, Allah did not reveal to a human being anything. Say, who revealed the scripture that Musa salam, brought as a light and guidance to the people? You Jews make it into pages, disclosing some of it and concealing much. And you were, you were taught that which you knew not, neither you nor your fathers. Say, Allah revealed it, then leave them in their empty discourse, amusing themselves. And this is a book which we have sent down, blessed and confirming what was before it, that you may warn the mother of cities, which city? Mecca, and those around it, those who believe in hereafter, believe in it, and they are maintaining their prayers. Rabbi ja'alni maqim as-salati wa min zurriyati. And who is more unjust than the one who invents a lie about Allah or says, it has been inspired to me. So here in this verse, Allah is saying that the most unjust and the biggest wrongdoer of the people is the one who invents a lie about Allah, like finding, failing to believe in the oneness of Allah and finding partners and deities with Allah or claiming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him an inspiration or has sent down a revelation to him. That is, the person claims to be a messenger or a prophet of Allah. So this is what the person is being most unjust. 
says what? It has been inspired to me while nothing has been inspired to him. And the one who says, I will reveal something like what Allah has revealed. I will reveal something like what Allah has revealed. And if you could but see when the wrongdoers are in the overwhelming pangs of death, while the angels extend their hands saying, discharge your souls. Today you will be awarded the punishment of extreme humiliation for what you used to say against Allah other than the truth and that you were towards his verses being arrogant. It will be said to them, and you have certainly come to us alone as we created you the first time, and you have left, you have left whatever we bestowed upon you behind, and we do not see with you any intercessors, which you claimed that they were among your associates of Allah. It has all been severed between you, and lost from you is what you used to claim. In this verse number 94, it's been mentioned a dialogue between Allah and the people when they will be presented to his court on the day of judgment. The words of Allah, which we, near, we, which we need to remember constantly and we need to fear constantly and we need to make and adjust our beliefs and deeds according to the remembrance of these words the fear of hereafter. Allah will say, that you have certainly come to us all alone, the way I created you the first day, and you've left behind everything, all your wealth, your power, your authority, and all those, all those idols, and all those deities, and all those friends, and all those companions, and all those you worshipped other than Allah, you've left them behind. Remember standing in the court of Allah, a person all by himself, and each, every one of the people are going to come across this situation in the state of affairs on the day of judgment. Everyone will have to stand in the court of Allah all by himself, all alone, without, without any helper, any friend, any supporter, anyone to console or protect, anyone to intercede, no wealth to barter, no wealth to trade, and there will be no barrier. There will be no barrier between the person and Allah. There will be no wail. There will be no interpretal, direct conversation, direct dialogue between Allah, Maliki Yawmuddin, and the person standing all by himself. Allah Azza wa Jal asking the person, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed, he has kindly informed all of us about the questions in this position. The first question, the first question for all the people regarding the rights of Allah will be about what? Will be about Salah. Will be about Salah. And then if the Salah of the person will be according to the Sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, it will be said that if there are any shortcomings in the obligatory Salah of my person, then look for the supererogatory Salah and fulfill the shortcomings, and the rest of the accountability will be easy. And Prophet ﷺ has informed all of us about this position, in this scenario, when we will all be standing in the court of Allah all by ourselves, there will be questions. Traditions tell, traditions report, that no son of Adam salam, will be able to budge an inch. No son of Adam salam, will, able to, will be able to budge an inch until, unless he answers the questions, five questions. How did you spend your youth? How did you spend your youth? What did you believe in? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you wear? How did you talk? How did you behave? And then the next question, okay, fine. Youth, you were youthful. You were not knowledgeable. You did not have the experiences of life, but how did you spend the rest of your life? Did you indulge 
in any polytheistic beliefs, in any polytheistic customs and norms of your society? Or did you, did you, you were not worried about the criticism of any critic and you just, did you stick to the belief and faith on the oneness of Allah, leaving behind all forms of polytheistic customs and norms of the society? And then how did you earn your livelihood will be the third question. And the fourth will be, how did you spend? How did you spend the money you had earned? And last but not the least, when you had been blessed with knowledge, how far did you act on it? Allahumma anfa'ni bima allamtani wa allimni ma yanfa'ni wa sidni ilma. So there, on the day of judgment, it will be said, you have come to us all alone as we created you for the first time, and you have left whatever we bestowed upon you behind, and we do not see with you your intercessors, which you claim that they were among you, your associates of Allah. It has all been severed between you, and loss from you is what you used to claim. Indeed, Allah is the cleaver of green and the dead seed. He brings the living out of the dead and he brings the dead out of the living. That is Allah. So how are you deluded? He is the cleaver of the daybreak and has made the night for rest and the sun and the moon for calculation. That is the determination of the exalted in might and knowing. It is he, it is he who placed for you the stars that you might be guided by them throughout the darknesses of the land and the sea. We have detailed the signs for the people who know. It is he who produced you from one soul and gave you a place of dwelling and of storage. We have detailed the signs for people who understand. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. And it is he who sends down the rain from the sky and we produce thereby the growth of all things. We produce from it greenery from which we produce grains arranged in layers and from the palm trees of its emerging fruits are clusters hanging low and we produce gardens of grape wines and olives and pomegranates similar and yet varied. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. Look at each of Look at each of its fruits when it yields and at its ripening. Indeed, in it are signs for people who believe. Rabbana, innana amanna, faghfir lana zanubana, wakina azab an nar. But despite all this, Despite all the creations of the creator and despite receiving all the blessings and bounties of Allah, what happens is they have attributed to Allah partners, the jinns, while he has created them and has fabricated for him sons and daughters. Exalted is he and high above what they describe. He is the originator of heavens and the earth. How could he have a son when he does not have a companion and he created all the things and he is of all things knowing. That is Allah, your Lord. There is no deity except him, the creator of all the things. So worship him. He is disposer of all the things. Vision perceives him not, but he perceives all the visions, and he is subtle, the acquainted. There has come to you enlightenment from your Lord. So whoever will see does so for the benefit of his soul, and whoever is blinded does, does harm against it, and say, I am not a guardian over you. And thus do we diversify the verses so the disbelievers will say, you have studied. And so we make the Quran clear for a people who know. Follow, follow what has been revealed to you from your Lord. There is no deity except him and turn away from those who associate others with Allah. <coughs> But if Allah had willed, they would not have associated. And we have appointed over you them as a guardian, as a guardian, nor are you a manager over them. Words number 108. 
and do not insult those do not insult those they invoke other than allah lest they insult allah in enmity without knowledge thus we have made pleasing to every community their deeds then to their lord is their return and he will inform them about what they used to do in this verse 108 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is educating all the followers of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam all of us as to how we have to behave with the polytheists about their idols and this is teaching us what uh, a religious tolerance a religious respect of other religions and of other faiths and beliefs and they swear by Allah, their strongest oaths, that if a sign came to them, they would surely believe in it. Say, the signs are only with Allah, and what will make you perceive that even if a sign came, they would not believe. And we will turn away their hearts and their eyes, just as they refuse to believe in it the first time. And we will leave them in their transgression, wandering blindly. And even if we sent down to them angels with the message and the dead spoke to them of it, we gathered together every created thing in front of them, they would not believe unless Allah should will. But most of them of that are ignorant. And thus we have made for every prophet and enemy, devils from mankind and jinn, inspiring to one another, decorative speech in delusion. But if your Lord had willed, they would not have done it. So leave them and that which they invent. And it is so the hearts of those who disbelieve in hereafter will incline towards it and they and that they will be satisfied with it and that they will commit that which they are committing say then is it other than allah i should seek as a judge while it is he who has revealed to you the book explained in detail and those to whom we previously gave the scriptures know that it is sent down from your lord in truth so never be among the doubt doubters and the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can alter his words, and he is the hearing and the knowing. And if you obey, if you obey most of those upon the earth, they will mislead you from the way of Allah. They follow not except assumptions, and they are not but falsifying. So the message of the verse is that copying and following the majority will lead to what being misguided and going astray this verse nullifies the common proverb as it says that majority is authority or as it is said that rome do as romans do so blind following of the majority will lead to what would lead to being misguided would lead to being going astray for a muslim and for a believer, the merit of whom we need to follow, copy, idealize, glamorize, or obey is the orders of Allah and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We being told, And we being repeatedly ordered in Quran, Atiullah wa Atiul Rasul. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab an nar. Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of who strays from his way and who is most knowing of the rightly guided. So eat, eat of that meat upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned if you are believers in his verses. And why should you not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned while he has explained in detail to you what he has forbidden you, excepting, excepting that to which you are compelled indeed do many many lead others astray through their own inclinations without knowledge indeed your lord he is most knowing of the transgressors Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. and leave what is apparent of sin and what is concealed thereof
I repeat again, Allah says, leave what is apparent of sins and what is concealed thereof. Indeed, those who earn blame for sin will be recompensed for that which they used to commit. So Allah is ordering here to leave all apparent sins and all concealed sins because people who are sinners will be definitely punished on the day of judgment. And do not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has not been mentioned, for indeed it is a grave disobedience. And indeed do the devils inspire their allies among men to dispute with you. And if you were to obey them, indeed you would be associators of others with him. And is, is one who, who was dead, and we gave him life and made for him light by which to walk among the people like the one who is in darkness, never to emerge their form. That is, Allah says, a person who has been blessed with the nur, with the nur and light of guidance, is he like a person who is misguided, who is not, who has not received the nur of guidance and is still in darkness? Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura wa fi sam'i nura wa fi basri nura wa yamini nura wa yassari nura wa fawki nura wa tahti nura wa imami nura wa khulfi nura wa ja'alli nura. Thus, it has been made, made pleasing to the disbelievers that which they were doing. And thus, we have placed within every city the greatest of its criminals to conspire therein, but they conspire not except themselves, and they perceive it not. And when a sign comes to them, they say, never, never will we believe until we are given like that which was given to the messengers of Allah. Astaghfirullah Rabbi, what? arrogance and what stubbornness Allah is most knowing of where he places his message there will afflict those who committed crimes debasement before Allah and severe punishment for what they used to conspire verse 125 so whoever Allah wants to guide he expands his breast to contain Islam and whoever he wants to misguide he makes his breast tight and constricted as though he were climbing into the sky. Thus does Allah place defilement upon those who do not believe. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that opening his heart, that somebody, Allah wants to guide towards Islam, Allah wants to guide towards the right path. He expands his breath, uh, his breast to Islam. He does what? He yashra sadrahu lil Islam. Opening his heart to Islam means what? It means that the person, the person whom Allah is blessing with guidance, the person will open heartedly, with open heartedly and readily listen to Quran. Will with an open mind, will with an open mind, will start comprehending the messages of Islam with an open mind, will start accepting and believing in the messages of the Quran. And with an open mind, the person will start to obey the teachings of Quran with an open mind and open heartedly, the person will stay patiently obedient and will stay steadfast despite the trials in the path of guidance. And the person with an open mind will face the criticism of the critics and of all those around him. And person with an open heart and with an open mind without any hesitation will also spread the messages and the teachings of Quran and Hadith. But in contrast to that, the person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, the state of affairs goes like exactly opposite. That is why... That is exactly why before our Quran sessions, we recite the supplication of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, as has been mentioned in the verses of Quran, Rabbi Shrochli Sadri, Rabbi Shrochli Sadri, wa yassirli amri, wa akhlul uqdatam min lisani, wa yafqahu kawli. So this is why we recite this verse before we start the sessions of Quran, so that we also are blessed 
with this open frame of mind and with this openness of our breast while we read, we recite, we understand, and we remember, we obey, and we preach the messages of Quran and Hadith also. And this is the path of your Lord leading straight. We have detailed the verses for a people who remember, Allahumma ja'alli minhum, for them will be the home of peace, for whom who remember the verses of Quran who were recited to them, for them will be the home of peace with their Lord, and he will be he will be their protecting friend because of what they used to do and mention the day when he will gather them together and say, O company of jinn, you have misled many of mankind and their allies among the mankind will say, our Lord, some of us made use of others and we have now reached our term which you appointed for us, he will say, the fire is your residence. Residence for whom? For all the man and all the men and all the jinn who had collaborated together for the disobedience and for transgression and for creating corruption in land. Allah will say, the fire is your residence wherein you will abide eternally except for what Allah wills. Indeed, your Lord is wise and knowing. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. And thus will we make some of the wrongdoers allies of others for what they used to earn. O company of jinn and mankind, did there not come to you, to you messengers from among you, relating to you my verses and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? They will say, we bear witness against ourselves and the worldly life had deluded them and they will bear witness against themselves that they were the disbelievers. Disbelievers of what? Of oneness of Allah. Of what? Of the prophethood of the prophets. Of what? Of the day of judgment. That is because your Lord would not destroy the cities for wrongdoings while their people were unaware and for all other degrees from what they have done. And your Lord is not unaware of what they do. Allahumma hasibna khisab yasira. And your Lord is the free of need, the possessor of mercy. If he wills, he can do away with you and give succession after you to whomever he wills, just as he produced you from the descendants of other people. Indeed, what you are promised is coming and you will not cause failure to Allah. Say, O oh my people, work according to your position, for indeed I am working, and you are going to know who will be, who will have succession in home. Indeed, the wrongdoers will not succeed. Rabbana Zalamna Anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin and the polytheists. And the polytheists, they assign to Allah from that which he created of crops and livestock a share and say, this is for Allah by their claim, and this is for our partners associated with him. But what is for their partners does not reach Allah, while what is for Allah, this reaches their partners. Evil, evil is that which they rule. So this was some of the customs and the norms of the people of poly, uh, people of Arab who were indulging in various forms of polytheistic beliefs. Allah has negated all this, and likewise, <coughs> and likewise, to many of the polytheists, their partners have made to seem pleasing the killing of their children in order to bring about their destruction and to cover them with confusion in their religion. And if Allah had willed, they would not have done so. So leave them and that which they invent. And they say, these animals and crops are forbidden. No one may eat from them except whom we will by their claim. And there are those camels whose backs are forbidden by them and those upon which the name of Allah is not mentioned. 
all of this is an invention of untruth about him. He will punish them for what they were inventing. And they say, what is in the bellies of these animals is exclusively for our males and forbidden for our females. But if it is born dead, then all of them have share in shares therein. He will punish them for their descriptions. Indeed, he is wise and knowing. Those will have lost who killed their children in foolishness without knowledge and prohibited what Allah had prohibited for them, inventing untruth about Allah. They have gone astray and were not rightly guided. And he it is who causes gardens to grow, both trellised and untrellised, and palm trees and crops of different kinds of foods and olives and pomegranates, similar and yet dissimilar. Eat of them, eat of each of its fruits when it yields and give its due zakat on the day of its harvest and be not excessive. Indeed, he does not like those who commit in excess. So in this verse 141, is the order where Allah is saying that Allah with his mercy and with his blessings and bounties when makes the crops grow. The farmer, when he works and when he strives and he struggles and he makes effort, but with the will and with the blessings and bounties of Allah, do the crops grow and the and the and the farmer harvests the yield. So there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the right of Allah, right of Allah on the yield. And this is what is explaining the order of agricultural zakat to be paid when the crop is being cut or when the farmer receives the yield. Zakat for all the other commodities, as we learn from the messages of Quran and Hadith, zakat for all the other commodities, may it be wealth or cash or silver or gold or business or trade or any form of uh, commodities is paid once a year. It's just paid once a year. But as far as usher, that is the agricultural zakat, according to this order of Quran, the agricultural zakat has to be paid as many times as there will the yield will be received and it is paid on the day the harvest is made and uh, here also in this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala tusfu innahu la yuhibbul musrifin don't be wasteful don't be extravagant because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are what who are wasteful and extravagant in their manners of spending so allah has guided us all that all those who indulge in wasteful manners of spending may it be for exhibition or demonstration or show off or riya of any ways it it is what it will deprive the bondsmen of the love of allah and of the grazing livestock are carriers of burden and those too small eat of what Allah has provided for you and do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. There are eight mates. There are eight mates of ship of sheep too and of goats too. Say, is it the two males he has forbidden or the two females or that which has the womb of the two females contains? Inform me with knowledge if you should be truthful. And of the camels, two of the cattle, two. Two of the camels and two of the cattle say, is it the two males he has forbidden or the two females or that which the wombs of the two females contain? Or were you witnesses when Allah charged you with this? Then who is more unjust than the one who invents a lie about Allah to mislead the people by something other than knowledge? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So here in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating some innovations, some polytheistic innovations which the people in Arab of those days had created regarding their livestock. 
say, I do not find within that which has revealed to me anything forbidden to one who would eat it unless it be a dead animal or blood spilled out of the or the flesh of swine. For indeed it is impure or it be that slaughtered in disobedience dedicated to other than Allah. But whoever is forced by necessity, neither desiring it nor transgressing its limit, then indeed your Lord is forgiving and merciful. Verse 146, and to those who are the Jews, we prohibited every animal of uncloven hoof and of the cattle and the sheep. We prohibited to them their fat except what adheres to their backs or on the entrails or what is joined with the bones by that we repay them for their injustice and indeed we are the truthful. So here in this verse, number 146, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains a few things which were, which were prohibited for the Jews exclusively. Some things regarded their normal food, which were prohibited for the Jews exclusively. And Allah explains the reason for this exclusive prohibiting of the eatables was because uh, as a punishment, as a punishment and penalty for all forms of transgressions in which they were indulging. So if they deny you, say your Lord is the possessor of vast mercy, but his punishment cannot be repelled from the people who are criminals. Those criminals are whom? Criminals for whom the punishment will not be repelled are whom? Those who associate with Allah. They will say what? They will say, if Allah had willed, we will not have associated anything. Neither would our fathers, nor would we have prohibited anything. Likewise, did those before deny until they tasted our punishment. Say, do you have any knowledge that you can produce for us? You follow not except assumptions and you are not but falsifying. Say, with Allah is the far-reaching argument. If he had willed, he would have guided you all. Allahumma ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Say, bring forward your witnesses who will testify that Allah has prohibited this. And if they testify, do not testify with them. And do not follow their desires of those who deny our verses and those who do not believe in hereafter while they equate others with their Lord. Say, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited to you. So in this verse number 151, in the previous verses, Allah has explained and negated the fabricated concepts of how they had prohibited things. So now here in this verse, Allah explains the things which have been prohibited by Allah himself. So Allah says, come, I recite what your Lord has prohibited to you. He commands that the first thing prohibited, he commands that you not associate anything with him. So the first thing prohibited is finding partners with Allah, making deities with Allah, creating all and believing in all forms of polytheisms with Allah. You associate anything with him. This is the first thing which is prohibited. And to your parents, do good treatment. So what is prohibited is being, being bad treatment with their parents. And do not kill your children out of poverty. We will provide for you and them. And do not approach immoralities, what is apparent of them and what is concealed of them. And do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden to be killed except by legal right. That this has he instructed that you may use reason. So here in this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited polytheism. Then Allah orders to be kind with parents. So now here again, after Surah Baqarah and after Surah Nisa, once again, after the rights of Allah, does Allah mention the right of the parents? And then there is a don't 
for killing of the children because we know that killing of the children was highly prevalent in the Arab society. They used to generally, they used to kill their children, firstly, even the male and the female children because of uh, economic constraints. They are worried that it will be difficult feeding them. So Allah reassures here, we will provide for you and we will provide for them. Allah is the sustainer, Allah is the provider and Allah is Rabbul Alameen. So that is why Allah says that you need to rest assured that Allah will provide for you and them and they used to mainly they used to kill their daughters and daughters they used to kill for different reasons like they used to kill their children, daughters assuming that these daughters will not be earning hands and they will be just feeding mouths basically what economic constraints again and then they used to kill their daughters because they used to think that they're going to be other tribes attacking them and taking their daughters as slave girls, and this will be dishonoring for them. And then they used to kill their daughters for the thought and um, for the idea that when they will they will get adults and they will marry then they will they will have to surrender and submit to the son-in-law and they will be a source of disrespect and disregard for them. Or the son-in-law might come up and he might ask for the property and inheritance, share of inheritance also. So they used to kill their daughters and it was highly prevalent. And when the verses, these verses of la taqtulu awladakum, this is a major, this has been mentioned as a major, qana khit and kabira, Allah has labeled as killing of the children as a major sin. So when these verses of Surah An'am or the verses of Surah Bani Israel, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, he mentions, bi qutilat that the all those who have been who had been buried alive they will be asked on the day of resurrection that for which sin was she buried so when all these uh, verses of quran they were revealed and the manners in the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were also shown to the companions they realized how major sin it was then only did they realize how major sin it was. And then the companions, they used to come to Prophet Wasallam, and they used to narrate how inhuman and how brutal they had turned. And they had thrown their daughter in a well and how they had burying their howling daughters with their own hands. And Prophet Wasallam used to weep when they, he used to cry and his beard used to be wet with his tears when they used to narrate their events. But uh, I would mention here one thing is that may it be the killing of children, may it be the killing of children after their birth, or may it be the killing of a child in utero during pregnancy or aborting a pregnancy. This is all prohibited. This is all unlawful. And this is all haram. And this is all what Kana Khit and Kabira has been announced and proclaimed by Allah as a major sin. So exterminating an in utero baby, exterminating an in utero baby, aborting a live fetus at any duration of pregnancy at any duration of pregnancy is also killing of the children, similar like killing of the children as similarly prohibited and is committing a major sin. And do not approach the orphan's property except in a way that is the best until he reaches maturity and give full measures and wait in justice. We do not charge any soul except with with that within its capacity. And when you testify, be just, even if it concerns a, rear, a near relative and the covenant of Allah fulfill this has he instructed you that you may remember. And moreover, this is my path, which is straight. So follow it and do not follow other ways for you will be separated from his way. This has he instructed you that you may become righteous. Then we gave Musa salam, the scripture, making complete our favor upon the one who, who did good ones. And as a detailed explanation of all the things and as a guidance and mercy that perhaps in the matter of meeting with their Lord, they would believe. And this Quran is a book we have revealed, which is blessed. So follow it and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. 
we revealed it, lest, you say, the scripture was only sent down to two, group, two groups before us, but we were of their study unaware, or lest, you say, if only the scripture had been revealed to us, we would have been better guided than they. So there has now come to you a clear evidence from your Lord and a guidance and mercy then who is more unjust than the one who denies the verses of Allah and turns away from them. We will recompense those who turn away from our verses with the worst of punishments for their having turned away. Do they? Do they then wait for anything except that the angels should come to them or your Lord should come or that there come some of the signs of your Lord? The day that some of the signs of your Lord will come, no soul will benefit from its faith as long as it had believed before or had earned through its faith some good. Say, wait, indeed, we are also waiting. Indeed, those who have divided their religion have, and they have become sects, you are not associated with them in anything. Their affair is only left to Allah. Then we will inform them about what they used to do. Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed will have 10 times like thereof to his credit. And whoever comes with an evil deed will not be recompensed except like thereof, and they will not be wronged. This is a promise of Allah in this verse that whenever the followers of Prophet وسلم, they come up with a pious and a righteous deed, they will be rewarded a minimum of 10 times of reward. And a similar promise was also made with Prophet Sallallahu in the night of Miraj also. Out of the five things he was given at that meeting with Allah, this was one of the promises that he was made for all the rewards of all his followers. And the writing angels, the Karam and Katabin, have also been guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put down the deeds of the bondsmen in a way that Allah has guided and instructed them that when a person makes a desire or when the person decides or when the person makes an intention of a good deed, then one deed, reward of one deed should be written down by the Karam and Katabin. And then after making intention, if the person actually does the deed and actually does the intention which action which he had intended for, then they should be given a minimum of 10 times reward for that good deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is whom shakiran alima. And then they have been told and clearly ordered that if a person makes an intention of an evil deed or committing a sin, nothing should be written. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing should be put down. And when the person who had made an intention of committing a sin or doing a wrong deed actually goes about doing the wrong deed or committing the sin, then just one, one sin should be recorded in the record of the deeds. And that also we learn from some traditions that Karam and Katabin have been ordered that this should also be recorded like six hours later postpone writing of the one sin also to six hours in case the person realizes, in case the person regrets, repents, and seeks forgiveness so that nothing has to be even deleted. Allahumma hasibna hisabi yasira. Say, indeed, my Lord has guided me to a straight path, a correct religion, the way of Ibrahim, salam, inclining towards truth, and he was not among those who associated others with Allah. Say, indeed, my prayer, قُلْ إِنَّا صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَا وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is actually what it is. The verse which relates the true concept of the faith of oneness of Allah. This is the verse which is the actual spirit of monotheism. This is the verse which negates and puts a halt to all forms of polytheism. Say, indeed, my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, Lord of the worlds. 
no partner has he and this i have been commanded and i am the first among you of the muslims so these are like one of the last verses again in this allah is negating and refuting all forms of monotheism uh, polytheism and is inviting in very short and effective way for belief in oneness of allah say is it is it other than allah i should desire as a lord while he is the lord of all things and every soul earns not blame except against itself and no bearer of burden will bear the burden of another then to your lord is your return and he will inform you concerning over which you used to differ and if and it is he who has made you successors upon the earth and has raised some of you above the others in degrees of rank that he may try you through what he has given you indeed your lord is swift in penalty but indeed he is forgiving and merciful allahumma hasibna hisab yasira o oh, forgiving and merciful rab forgive all of us rabbi ighfir warham wa anta khairur rahimin astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa atubu ilaik astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa atubu ilaik اللهم انك عفو كريم تحب الاف فاعف عنا فاعف عنا فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اللهم اغفر لي ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين mean la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minas zalimin la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minas zalimin rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين ثم امين